Okay, guys, welcome to another video with how it's designed. In this SolidWorks video, I'm going to explain the proper simulation settings that you should have preset before running any kind of FEA simulation or analysis in SolidWorks. These settings will just make the displaying of results, interpreting results that much easier and quicker and making your actual simulation process more efficiently and just a little bit easier on the hardware as well. So we're gonna have the goal of just making your simulation run as smoothly as possible, as accurately as, pro as possible with these settings. Let's go ahead and take a look. But before that, please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you want a free SolidWorks FEA guide and a mini outline on how to run your simulation smoothly, go ahead and subscribe to my newsletter. I'll put the link in the description and you'll get a free guide. Also, check out my Patreon for exclusive full-length content on SolidWorks. It's very cheap to become a member. You'll love it if you're into SolidWorks, which I'm sure you are. So let's get started. <clears throat> Basically, we're going to have any part open. Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't even have to have, you know, static analysis or any sort of study set up yet. You're going to go first to SolidWorks add ins, fire up your simulation suite, which will ultimately load this additional tab here. Once you have the simulation tab and suite fired up, you're gonna go up to the top menu bar. You'll see simulation. We'll expand that and we'll drop this carrot down here all the way to options. So we have two tabs up here. We're gonna start with default options Okay, <clears throat> starting with units, since I am part of American society, depends where you're at in the world, I'm more of a fan of metric, um, but I'm not a hater on any of the uh, units, whether it's metric, SI, or English, but since I'm in America, I'm going to switch my settings to English preset for units. You can even get more technical here with, I'm going to go with stress and KSI. Hertz is fine. Temperature Fahrenheit, inches for displacement. If I were in other parts of the world, I'd probably do millimeters and, you know, Celsius, but we'll leave it like that for now. Let's go to contact. Nothing to really do here. Let's go to next. We'll go to load fixture settings. <coughs> Excuse me. I have this dry cough going on. Um, you can change symbol colors and this and that. Not a huge deal. You can see right now the fixture where we apply our constraints has the green. Where we apply force is like this purple pink color. The thing I want to show you is if you currently look at this applied force to this face in the background here, you'll see that the arrows are relatively small. That's at 100% symbol size. Let's say we want to apply another force on another face and we want to emphasize that it's more of a load. Um, we can increase our symbol size and ultimately our arrow size. We'll do 200%, for example. Go ahead and hit enter. And if we go and add another force now, you can see that the arrows, the symbols that represent that force are now larger. We can make this a larger value, maybe twice as much as the 100%. So kind of handy. Depends what your preferences are if you want to set just by default, all the arrows bigger, but that's what that does. Going back to 
the options. <clears throat> Those are really the only um, settings that I do here. I'm sure there's some others for heat flux, heat power, for example, and might want to change these colors if you want to maybe red. Um, let's go to mesh settings now. For typical mesh settings, the fastest and most efficient setting is going to be draft for most circumstances. When you're first running a simulation, FEA analysis, you're going to start with medium quality, um, you know, right in the middle granular mesh, which draft mesh quality is fine for most cases. Once you get really precise and granular and finer mesh, you're go going to want to do high quality mesh turned on, but you can leave draft quality for, you know, most typical average, uh, mesh settings and for the most efficient mesher uh, processing we recommend having curvature based on you can for define default number of elements in a circle at eight is about average maybe bump this up to 10 and that is what we will do with mesh settings. Moving on to results, so default solver. Automatic, you'll be fine running uh, the most you know, efficient and robust. I'm gonna do a separate video on the differences between each solver, but that will be a separate video. And then results folder, you can have you know, create a subfolder saying, you know, if it's depending on the study name, you know, study one results, etc. For that study, you can preset the name of the folder that the results will point to once it is done. <clears throat> now we're, we're going to get into plot. So when you are, after the results are displayed and you're looking at the Von Mises plots, etc., we're going to go ahead and check show maximum value and minimum value automatically turned on so that we don't have to worry about processing that in the post-processing uh, stage. And then we can, that's really about it for these settings, nothing too crazy. We can always, if we want, turn on discrete fringe settings, make the colors a little bit more separate, or if you want more of a blended uh, color shading, you can keep it as continuous. Color chart. For number formatting, instead of scientific, we're going to go floating and let's see here for another cool thing for a report. If you're running reports, static study format, sure. You can pre-fill descriptions, company name, logo, etc to make the report more tailored for you. And you can automatically remove certain sections that might be uh, wasteful in your reporting just to make it a bit shorter, which there's typically some sections that you don't really need. Um, you can uncheck them as needed. And that is going to be it for default options. And with all of those settings now preset before running our next simulation, we can hit enter to make the changes into effect. But one more step, we're going to also restart 
SolidWorks. So make sure you restart the SolidWorks program before running your next simulation to see those changes in effect. And that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Again, like, share, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to put the link to get your free SolidWorks FEA guide in the description. Don't forget to check out my Patreon. I'll put the link in the description as well. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.